are going to be going over the, you know, what's new in uh, Stratasys 3D printing. Uh, it's been a while since we've uh, done one of these, so there's a lot to cover in our uh, limited time today. So we're going to dive right in, and uh, so I'll, if you post any uh, questions in the chat, then I'll pick them up as they go. So feel free to type those away, and then our host here will uh, relay them to me. So thank you very much, and let's get started. So quick overview, we're going to go through the Stratasys portfolio, go over their new FDM machine, um, some of the new tricks on their uh, polyjet machines, their new stereolithography machine, and then if we have any time at the end, we'll dive into some of the software updates that have come out. So dive right in. As most of you might know that we use uh, FDM process here, fused deposition modeling. That is basically a very precise hot glue gun where we heat the material and extrude it through a head and put layer upon layer. So this is a nice little animation that kind of illustrates that. Moving on, here is our portfolio of the new of the standard FDM portfolio. Starting off from our idea series, which is more of the educational based uh, units. Even the U-print has been used in some production aspects. And then we get into the design series. These are the new F123 series, that is by Stratasys. And that's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time because we have a new machine in there. And also, we will be touching base on our carbon fiber edition on the 380. So moving on. So our production machines, as mentioned, we have our new uh, new-ish machine, the Carbon Fiber Edition, which was created specifically for uh, machine shops and places that use a lot of jigs and fixturing. So this has two material types. It's the ASA for quick down dirty prototypes. Let's get them out onto the floor, test them out, and then you have the Nylon 12 CF, which is one of the strongest materials, if not the strongest material, that Stratasys offers. So that one uh, really allows you to build jigs and fixtures that will take a beating, just like your aluminum stock ones. So let's dive into the Stratasys 123 series. So here we have the new F120 versus the F370 on the left, or on the right. So one of the things you'll notice is that the F170, 270, and 370 is the um, same box, but they change the internal components. So the outside and the dimensions will stay the same. It's just the internal components that are what's going to change on you. So taking a closer look at these, so you have on the far left, you have the 120 versus the 170. So, you know, schools, professionals over here on the far left side, once you get into the 270 and up, now you're talking about, you know, um, a more robust machine, larger build envelope, a little bit more material um, choices. You've got, uh, you know, advanced FDM mode available on the F170 through the F370 now. And then you also have, you know, on the high end, the 370, you have the PC ABS, which is, you know, an ABS plastic with some PC in there. So it gives it that extra strength and flexibility that people need. Um, oh, the other big one is the four material bays really kicks things off with the auto changeover, right, the 270. So if you're doing a lot of large prints over weekend prints or overnight prints, you're low on one spool instead of having to take it out, put a new spool in, now you can have second spool that can auto feed into the head when the first spool runs out. So then you have to deal with less inventory. So yeah, here's just a quick size comparison. You know, the 370 is much larger than the 170. Um, you know, 10 by 10 by 10 versus 14 by 14 by 10. And then, yeah, once again, we have, uh, oh yeah, four uh, layer resolutions, except for on the 120, that one only has the 7th thou up to the 13th thou. Moving on. Now, what's new in this? Well, there's actually 15 new patents that are pending in application status, and then there's the 43 patents for the FDM process that Stratasys is pulling from. So they are constantly innovating with this new F series. Inside of here, we have you know, new material options for both you know spool base. So now it's easier to load, um, cheaper on the pocketbook, or better quality material, cheaper on the pocketbook, easier to load. You have the great softwares behind it. You have like Insight, if you're familiar with the high-end machines. This one allows you to dive into the STL, split it into two builds if you need to, um, create groups, layers, and really modify line by line, layer by layer, tool path by tool path, an STL. You have the GrabCAD print option, which allows mobile monitor monitoring. So you can log in from your phone, 
at home over a weekend to check in on the print, see how it's building. You can see, you can track a lot of statistics, who's printing what, when it's available, when it's not. You have advanced FDM mode for changing, think of it as Insight Lite and upgrade user interface. And also, you know, the soluble support, great stuff. So with that, we have, you know, the reason why to go with one of the F series is that, well, we have great dimensional accuracy. So you can see the things around the top there within plus or minus 0 0.01 inch. So, you know, we have a nice spec of, uh, to be within spec of. So uh, that's one of the best reasons to go with us. We stress this is really pushing the envelope on the, let's make sure these things are accurate and reliable. Next, here's just a, a list of uh, materials. So you have your engineering grade on the left, high performance in the middle. This is when you get into the 450, the 380 regular, all temps, uh, PPSF. Uh, you have your nylon 12 CFs, um, your Ontario, which is the resistant uh, to oils and gasolines, such. And then you have your sacrificial tooling material as well if you're doing carbon fiber layups but I want to kind of just highlight a couple of them. First, we're going to go over the F-Series because we're spending a lot of time on this F-Series. Like, it's a great, great series of machines. You can upgrade from a 170 to a 370 with just hardware upgrades, so it's pretty nice because you have most of the boxes already there. Um, you know, availability is, this will get you through the bulk of your prototyping and some of your jigs and fixture needs, so we know some tool shops that use the PC ABS in particular to get their jigs and fixtures off off to the races and into production while the ABS, you know, proves out the point. And then you also have the PLA, just like the prosumer um, printers, to really test out ideas in a fast, down and dirty way. Just let's get a piece out in someone's hands quickly and affordably. Uh, TPU is the new flexible, durable one. It's been a while, been in, it's been a little while. It's been in the making for quite some time, um, but they really kind of honed it in to make sure that when this TPU actually prints, it's a nice, high-quality uh, print. And then over here, you'll see on the left, F120 versus the, F, or the F370, the different materials available on each. But to put that in a different perspective, here's all the different colors, because some people really like colors. So PLA, ABS, and ASAs will have a lot more color options as opposed to, you know, your TPU. That's just available in black, or your PC ABS, black or white. So then, uh, and then also the little asterisks here are materials that you can buy in both 60 cubic inch spools and 90 cubic inch spools. So if you're doing a lot of large prints over the weekend, you can go to the, you know, 90 cubic inch spools so that you don't have to go through it as much or swap out as much. Next, let's talk about, you know, our strongest FDM material, Nylon 12 CF. So it's chopped carbon fiber bits inside of a Nylon 12 as it's extruded out. So it is the highest strength to stiffness uh, to rate ratio of any materials Stratasys currently offers. And once again, jigs, fixturing, some production parts. It's being used to replace some billet aluminum um, covers and such, and the auto trans. Um, here's just a kind of a layout of, you know, its tensile strength versus, you know, others. XY, PSI, you know, all of these things are looking great. Like, even the Nylon 12 is doing pretty well. Still not as good as a PC or a Nylon 6, but then once you get the Nylon 12 CF, you know, you kind of, some of these, you're three times the, uh, like, tensile modulus X or XY, you're three times the PSI rating. So it is an amazing material, incredibly stiff. And, yeah, once you put your hands on it and actually kind of crank on it, you can see the difference and feel it. It's great. So I highly recommend when you're at a trade show or you're visiting us at one of our upcoming uh, office events in, was it September and October, to get your hands on some carbon fiber and feel it and really think of the possibilities with this material. The other one is, yes, the new TPU. You know, it's the only last round on the market currently that has that valuable support. So it's really easy to print with. You can print it in orientations that seem counterintuitive if you're coming from the prosumer world. So 
you can print it with the supports and you can get these crisp, great looking parts off of it. You can clearly print this part. It looks just like the one on the left. It's covered in support material. Then you throw it in the tank and let it bounce around for, you know, an hour, a couple hours. And it comes out crisp, clean, and ready to use. It's a, it's a great way to create very complex, flexible parts using this new TPU material. So here's another piece of, you know, a unique geometry, something that would be with the hose tie downs put into an area that needs to have a flex that just test out, make sure the design works. It's really great to do these weird shaped parts that, you know, before you could do it out of a hard plastic, but it doesn't truly give you that feel of, you know, wiggling in place into an engine cavity or, a, you know, engine bay. Like sometimes you just need that flex so that you can test some things. So in comparison, you know, our TPU versus these other flexible uh, products that we have or from other competitors, it's like you can see that our elongation at break is twice that of our next nearest competitor down to, you know, our ultimate tensile strength as well is pretty much twice, nearly twice as much as our next competitor as well. So it really shows you that this stress took it time to really get um, the key properties of this material correct and then also with the support material make sure that you can print it in geometries that are usable as well so it's really nice in that aspect. Now let's get into the polyjet world. So, so watch this little animation here very similar to the you know FDM process it's a layer by layer process but this one involves jetting material from printer heads or print heads and then carrying it with a UV light that allows you to get this crazy high definition parts. One of the trade-offs, just because it looks good, it's more brittle, it's not true thermoplastic, these are acrylic-based polymer. So here's our portfolio. Start off at our object 30, little desktop units that you can have in a cubicle with you, all the way up to the object 1000 where you can literally sit on the build tray and you can build, you know, small cadavers. But the thing that we're going to be focusing on most here, because the biggest advancements we've had are the J750 and the J350. So let's get started. So with so with the J735 and the J50, the the major difference between the two is build build area and the number of uh, materials you can put into your uh, uh, machine. So longer running, larger, or same size containers, but just doubled up on the larger one. So the process, you know, that we normally start off with is we have to be a SolidWorks vendor, so we're always going to side with our SolidWorks. You're going to model it up in SolidWorks. Then you can add stylizing or coloring, creating uh, bitmaps that you can then configure and wrap onto your part, and then you hit print. So using a series of different products. You can do them. You know, I can even use, I personally have used Photoshop and SolidWorks and Tangent together, or just use the internal SolidWorks uh, new texturing feature that we did a great blog post on, if you check out CATI.com, about adding texture and color to your prints. So, um, and that was just using uh, straight up SolidWorks 2019. And yeah, then we also, I believe, have a couple blog posts as well about how to use Photoshop to attach these colors to to your SolidWorks solid model and create those bitmaps. So next, we're going to start talking about, you know, some photorealistic simulation. Like, we've got some crazy, great prints done in the sample world from Stratasys of these amazing parts. Um, you know, we have engineering grade with a digital ABS that we can use to uh, do injection molds or blow molds with. We can do over molding with a rubber like on top of a hard plastic to replicate, you know, screwdrivers, other utensils, and then you can have single color all the way to full color crazy patterns uh, across your parts. So from matte to glossy, and then yeah, a full spectrum of what's called the shore values that you can go from like a nice rubber like for the sole of your shoe all the way to a hard plastic that you would normally find in, you know, any kitchen utensil you've got. So, yeah, the J750, it's one of these large guys, and it's the only full-color multi-material printer 
on the market right now. So you can have a rubber like that has color in it mixed with a solid plastic. Like the opportunities with the J750 when you're making you know, mock-up products and other such items that require that kind of full color to really get, say, customer buy-in or testing validate, this is the printer for you. Because the other reason is now your graphics marketing side will be very happy with you. We, we are the only Pantone standardized color system available. So you can pick out, it's not, there's a nice color map of the full Pantone color spectrum versus the full visual color spectrum versus what we can print. So we have gone through with Stratasys and partnered with Pantone to map out all of the Pantones that this printer can hit. So if you wanted Coca-Cola Red, you can do that. Um, and then there's also the other colors that don't quite make it. So there's a meter inside of the software that tells you, hey, we've detected this color. We can't actually hit that, we'll be getting X amount close. So then you can go back to your design team and say, hey, you know, this orange is slightly off. If we change it one way or the other, we can actually get to print how you want it. Otherwise, it'll look a little dull or too bold. So it gives a lot of feedback for when color is a need, this one will give you all the feedback you'll need. So there's a nice, you know, whole family of materials. You can go from the crystal clear, so it's like glass looking, all the way down to, you know, rubber likes and digital ABS for, you know, those really rigid applications, blow molding, like I mentioned before, um, snap fits and such. Uh, and then the Agilis um, material, which should be getting a, one more slide, a couple more slides before we get to Agilis. But yeah, we have a lot of great applications. We have crystal clear to medical, dental, crazy thin walls, and then just full color range. Now we're talking about Agilis. So if you want a, you know, an Agilis 30, it goes from shore A all the way up to, you know, 95. So you can go from a really solid part all the way down to a very, very flexible. So um, if anyone's familiar with the Tango material or the Tango Plus material that replaced that, this is replacing the Tango Plus. So it's leagues better than Tango and, you know, twice as better than, or two to two and a half times as be better than Tango Plus. So a couple little uh, quick stats for you. So here's the Tango Plus column, the second to the farthest right. The farthest right is our Agilis column. So you can see the tear resistant much higher um, in all respects. And then the elongation at break also. It, Tango Plus's highest rating is the lowest rating of the Agilis. So it's an overall improvement across the board. And yeah, great stuff to work with. Digital ABS is another great material that we've been working with. Um, you know, again, we did, I don't know if you noticed, but we did go from digital ABS to digital ABS plus. And once again, Stratasys is constantly improving all their materials. So this is 38% more impact strength. And here's just a quick chart of how much more it jumped up in comparison. So there are two modes that you can actually print it in. There's a thin wall and then there's a post that you can use, and then there's also pre and post thermal treating that you can also do to your digital ABS to increase the strength as well and heat deflection ratings. So it's great. And then during the eyeglass world, uh, definitely check out the Vero Flex and its potential is great. It's a Vero material, not as nearly as flexible as Agilis, but flexible enough to be an eyewear and something that will be used, dropped, athletic apparel, and you know, it's going to be, it's it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Because yeah, here's a nice picture where you can actually give these lenses and things a flex, and then, you know, full color capability. So I wear in other, I don't know, off the top of my head, other industries haven't really picked it up quite yet, but I'm interested to see where this material takes us. And along with that, we also have the vivid color. So this is the kind of the, what pushed us into Pantone, it is the vivid line. This allows us to, you know, really match that, you know, passion red or azul blue that are on the screen here. So we can do the wood like realistic textures. You guys have probably seen this. You've gone to any of our trade shows. They're at all of our booths. Uh, the perfume bottles are a little bit more rare to come across, but yeah, you can come see some of those. Nail polish ones, they, they look 
Like if they're on just a table, they look pretty spot on. Once you pick them up and feel them, you know they're, the weight's a little off. They don't have liquid in them, and you can start telling that something's off. But yeah, visually, spot on. This lens, it's actually funny. Um, it was printed uh, the opposite side up, so this side has actually been polished, but the other side is unpolished, and you can see how glossy and pristine it is, and this looks like a production-grade part, so a lot of automotive people don't believe us that, yeah, this came from a 3D printer. Some more of the product lines that are being tested with it. And that leads us to the new stereo lithography machine from Stratasys. So, stereo lithography. This is a layer-by-layer -layer process from a vat of material that's getting pulled out as, uh, you know, through the process of polymerization. There's a broad range of applications. There's great, um, I don't know, I'll say the propeller, impeller, unique geometries that would require a crazy amount of support material and post-processing in our polyjet or FDM side. Uh, stereolithography really lends itself to those industries. So if you haven't been, you know, hanging out with the other bars and stuff that have been selling uh, stereolithography for years, Stratus has, has cre created a video for you. So here we go. It's also mute, so pretend there's happy music in the background. But yeah, it's been four years in the making, so it's been used in Stratasys' Red Eye Company and the production side for over four years. And now it's with the advent of the patents going up from our competitors, it's being released to the customers now. And yeah, you may be familiar with some of the prosumer SLA machines. This is the SL style from Stratasys. You know, bigger, more robust, definitely. If you have four, four or eight of those uh, SLA machines on a, you know, a rack in your place, you should definitely look into this SL machine from Stratasys, because we could probably replace all eight of those with one of these. So that's just kind of the process, how it works. Great look at it, so a nice little screenshot up of it. And yeah, uh, Stratasys is using one of the most notable takeaways is this is an open VAT system. So it is just as configurable as one of the open source prosumer versions. It's just an industrial production grade version of that. And yeah, down here you can see, if you're from the SLA world, this 355NM resin, would ring a bell, but yeah, you can use any of those and in this printer. So you don't have to buy directly for Stratasys. If you have your own in-house version of that resin that you specifically tweaked and use on your prosumer ones, now you can use it in a professional grade system with you know better software integration, more reliability and whatnot for your uses in-house. Build volume is actually pretty massive for an SLA. It's 20 by 20 by what's it? Uh, 23. I know a couple of the advertisements I've seen are talking about 4 by 6 by 5. So that's some of the prosumer versions that you're kind of talking. This is, you know, five, six times the size of some of the prosumer ones that you can get off the shelf. So when you want large parts reliably and, you know, with great resolution, what is that, 0 0.0005 inch, it's top notch. And then, yeah, we also have, you know, here's some more of the specs. It's open vet. Um, they have gone through and created four commercial profiles, four resins that they've uh, worked with those producers of. So you can get four commercially available resins that are kind of with the Stratasys stamp of approval saying, we've used it, we've tested it, this is how you use it without any, you know, without any trouble. Otherwise, if you use the open vet system, Stratasys will, and their support system will work with you to try to configure it. But yeah, if you're familiar with the SLA world, SL is very similar in technology. It's just the open source version of it. And configuring the lasers and the cure time and the dips and all that fun uh, stuff does take some tinkering if you're using your custom open system resin. So it's available. It is a, uh, a hurdle to get over, but 
if you do get over that hurdle, you do have something truly customized for your business, for your particular application. So it is, by a lot of our customers' accounts, a very worthwhile hurdle to jump through to get their custom resins into the machine. And then here are the four um, verified materials. So, you know, low viscosity, you have water resistant, you have most likely clear, you have tooling, wind tunnel testing, you have investment casting base, and then you have a general use one that are currently there. And then, once again, when this was first kind of announced a couple months ago, there was only two, now there's four. Stratus is continually adding more to this. Now let's talk about some of the softwares in our last couple minutes. So GrabCAD, it's a free download. If, you, if you're thinking about joining the Stratus family or if you already have it and you aren't using GrabCAD Print, I highly recommend you dive into this. It's a great software package. It's just like any other of your slicing programs that you've used in the past, Catalyze, uh, MakerVot, Replicator, like all of those fun uh, platforms. It's just today. It's you know, user interface is nice, it's clean, it's crisp. So easy to drop in. You can use STLs or you can use native CAD files. You can remotely access it and see how it's doing, how much material is left in your machine, you know, how many hours is left on your uh, head, uh, your print head, so that you can order replacements or, you know, plan for being down so you can really get that preventative maintenance up in front as opposed to being reacting to a down printer. And no, for the longest time, you know, I only had a couple choices for infill with Catali or Catalyst and uh, Control Center from Stratasys. Well, now it's not the case. So this now turns into, I believe, eight different infills. Um, and then the question is, is what about Insight? If you're familiar with Insight, it's a class that, uh, that CATI offers, and it is the layer-by-layer -layer editing of models. Really advanced if you need to go layer by layer and change tool paths and really make a print the most perfect print in the world. Highly recommend doing, going after Insight. And then, if you saw, I mentioned F, advanced FDM mode before. What is it? Well, this is one CAD file that has multiple bodies in it. And you're able to select each individual body and change the porosity, change the thickness of the shell. Like, you can change a lot of different things. You can create, um, uh, you can change the diameter of different holes to drop inset or uh, heat heat melt inserts into or helicoil inserts. You can do self-supporting angles. Like, you can change how the support angle support or, uh, supports different walls. There's a lot of great stuff. So, <clears throat> once again, I call it like inside light. It's advanced FDM mode is in, inside of GrabCAD. It's one of the best kept secrets um, you probably don't realize you already have. So if you're using GrabCAD, you just go to File, Preferences, FDM, and then Enable Advanced FDM mode, and it turns it on. So you already have it if you've downloaded GrabCAD. So that's the other funny thing is there's no extra download. It's already on your machine. You just need to activate it like by saying, show me where it's at. But on this slide, you can see that GrabCAD print versus Insight. Insight does leagues more than GrabCAD is. Will GrabCAD eventually, advanced FDM mode eventually get there? Eventually. But until then, you can use both Insight and GrabCAD to accomplish your needs. So if it's a slight tweak, use GrabCAD. Or if it's a slight tweak, use GrabCAD advanced FDM mode. If you have to go make this perfect for production level, go Insight. You have you know multiple options to go through. So here's a quick reason of what you can do. So Standard edition is just you drop in a GrabCAD, hit print. Then wall is there's a little checkbox in the standard edition of GrabCAD. Now it allows you to edit the file with just a checkbox, being like, yeah, change the thin walls. Uh, ver uh, this v VRW, that's variable road width. So this one over extrudes the head for the road width to fill in gaps. So now once you start comparing the left to the right, you'll see that the variable road width actually filling a lot of the gaps that were left before, but then creating other issues as well. Once again, that's just a checkbox, so it's an easy button, and that's why it's not the best. Once you get into advanced FDM mode, you can choose surface surface faces and bodies, and you can change the infill, and you'll know, all right, that one by this slice is the best option. But at the same time, this took a little bit more time on the far right. While this one was just a checkbox, literally took, what, three seconds to click? All right, maybe, you know, now you're getting into 
what to do. So let's zoom in on this, you know, really showing the air gaps of what happens from just standard print. Might work, but might break. Um, thin wall nearly does, doesn't do much of anything. <laughs> um, in specific cases, you can really see it shine, but in variable road width, you know, fills it in, over extrudes in some areas, but leaves some other voids. Like it just messes up some stuff. But then advanced FDM mode really fills that in. So if you take your time and learn your tools that you have available, you'll know which ones to use when. So um, the other cool thing on the inside of this, we can select a face, we can increase the surface thickness, and just fix that area. Or we can select the entire body, and then we can dive into what percentage fill we want, what result. Rigidity. We can even click this uh, advanced mode of the advanced FDM mode and dive into the angle of infill. We can change the angle of it and we can change it from hexagonal to, you know, the standard uh, slats, the crosses that, uh, cubes that Sysis use. You can do double bends, you can do regular, like you can modify a lot of things in the advanced features of the advanced FDM mode. So. There are tons of stuff, and we have tons of blog posts. I think we have about five up about advanced FDM mode alone. We have about 14 or 15 insight blogs, so if you have more questions about that, dive into our blog or ask them now. And then with that, let's move on into, you know, to wrap up this thing really quickly is our voxel printing. So voxel is a 3D pixel, as you can think of it, ways to color objects. So, um, yeah, if you had a thousand progressive slices and each one of these pixels was like this, you could create, by stacking them on top of each other, a bunch of different pixels of color, and then you can create this, something that's really unique and crazy um, when you think about it. Like, you couldn't CAD this out. Like, the time and intensity that it would take to 3D model each individual pixel in this sphere that, you know, it's only two inches astronomical, like it would be a team of people to accomplish what. So you, you leveraging this new technology to create voxels, to create unique interior um, colors or unique properties. You can mix materials in there too to change the strength. That's where this voxel printing is really taking off. And then of course, like a studio is one of my favorite. If you haven't seen Missing Link, uh, Kubo and the Three Strings, or Box Trolls, you're missing out. But when you go watch that, it's work-related expense, so don't worry. Go and watch it. Just realize, you know, most of those puppets um, in Kubo, it was like 70% of those um, parts were 3D printed. And then 70% of the 3D print models were not touched up after they were printed. They were just used right off the machine. You go watch um, Missing Link. Now, they were up in the 90% of their um, puppets and things were 3D printed. And 90% of their... 3D printed puppets were not touched up. They were just taken off of the uh, printer, support material uh, soaked off, and then they were put into production. That's the power of this new advanced FDM mode, or not, rather, the new J750. Um, you can bring stop motion to life a lot faster, or production you know, products to life very quickly. So thank you for joining us. I believe my uh, half hour should be just about up. So. Yeah, Chris, do we have any questions in the chat? I haven't been 